I'm Keith Simonton and welcome to What to Watch. If you loved Expendables 1 and Expendables 2, then imagine jamming them together, add some humor, Mel Gibson, Wesley Snipes, and Harrison Ford, and you have the best of the series, Expendables 3. This third installment has CIA operative Max Drummer, Harrison Ford, assigning Stallone's Barney Ross to bring to justice a ruthless arms dealer, who also happened to help Barney co-found the Expendables named Conrad Stonebanks, played with kooky energy by Mel Gibson. Barney realizes that his old team, even with the addition of Dr. Death, played by Wesley Snipes, is no match for Stonebanks. So he retires his old comrades, like Lee Christmas, Jason Statham's character, in a last-ditch effort to save them. He then arranges for Kelsey Grammer's Bonaparte to recruit and assemble a whole new crew, including the talkative Galgo, the exuberant Antonio Banderas, Kellen Lutz, and UFC MMA champ Randa Rousey. When Barney's new team comes under attack, he pulls together everyone, including his old competitor, Trent Mauser, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, to make things right. I'm exhausted just recounting this, and I haven't even mentioned Jet Li, Dolph Lundgren, Randy Couture, and Terry Crews, all back for another round of mayhem. Was this easy? Pretty much. So, I, gentlemen, uh, it's incredibly entertaining, most entertaining, I think, of the series. Um, can you talk about uh, getting this team together, particularly Mr. Snipes? You obviously already had Mr. Statham, Mel Gibson, Harrison Ford. A lot of it uh, works on relationships and uh, coming cold. A lot of actors can be a bit standoffish, not, not, not in a bad way, but uh, nervous. They don't know exactly what it's like. Do I fit in and so on and so forth? But because of all the years I've uh, been knowing these guys, even on the periphery or up close and personal, I can pick up the phone and I do it personally. So it usually doesn't go through an agent. And that way uh, we, I say, listen, no matter what, it, even if you don't like the script, I'll make you like it. By the time you're done, I promise you, you can write your own part if necessary. Can you talk about uh, your involvement? Because I, I, I know I know some people were like, what? I think that's actually good. Always keeping guessing has been my, my theory through my whole career, honestly. When, um, even when I started out as a, a young man in my 20s, I'd say always keep them guessing until I can't figure out and you'll be able to actually work for a long time in this business. Now, um, this industry is given to trying to figure out people and thinking they have. So I've had an opportunity to share some uh, some work with them that surprised them. Boss was one of those things. And from there now, you know, Transformers and, and this film, um, I think people are going to start getting used to the idea that I do things that surprise them. <laughs> what's something you added? Uh, you get the script. What's something you added on set that's in the film? Well, I tried to add a little bit of uh, humor. You know, make him seem a little, my character, Dr. Death, seem a little crazy on one end of the spectrum and then a little humorous on the other other end of the spectrum. He has a lot, really. He, he's, he directs himself in a way when it, when he he goes into a certain pitch, tingling, tingling, and all that. That's oh, him. Great to have you back. No better place to be. <laughs> I have a kind of a fly by the seat of your pants style of working, and uh, actually Stallone kind of does too. So. That was what I think we brought to it in the days I worked that uh, people were surprised by because we didn't really stick to the script. Uh, I would say, this line, this line here kind of sucks. What do you think? He'd say, oh, it's just from an old draft. And uh, that's okay. Can we say something else? And he said, uh, yeah. I said, well, I had this one. You know, so, you know, it, it, we were spitballing most of the time, and it was really fun. And we, we came up with a great kind of connection, I think, that I, I would love to work with him some more. No, I'm sure you're doing that on the first film. Like, Sly, uh, what about this line? Uh, it's amazing how much stuff gets written on the fly, on yeah. the spot. He comes up with a new one-liner, yeah. or, you know what, you shouldn't say that, you should say that, and he gives you a whole different thing and, and just kind of manipulates it and turns it around. Yeah. So all three films have been that way. Yeah, he really knows what he's up to. There's rumors of a fourth and even a fifth. He had a great response. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you know, I said, do uh, you think you'll be too old for the fourth and fifth one? I said, well, yeah, my character will be uh, wearing Dependables in the Expendables, so <laughs> I can I can carry. It. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think I would like to continue this with the fourth because, uh, believe it or not, you you start to hone it down. Uh, franchises are based on the third one. 
That's the key. That's the hump. You can get away with two. Two is not really a franchise. It's a sequel. This is a franchise. And if this works, we're home free. And then you can really explore all kinds of actors. With more humor, less gore, and more stars, Expendables 3 lives up to its billing as an action film, but it's also keenly aware that it's sending up the extremes of the action genre. When you hear Arnold Schwarzenegger shout, get to the choppa, you realize that the filmmakers are violently intent on you having a good time, which makes it what to watch. The Expendables 3 is in theaters nationwide in the U.S. on August 15th. You can find local movie showtimes and tickets on IMDb.